volunteering to bring back the best source of Soviet intelligence you've got at a time where Russia and America are on the brink of nuclear war. <laughs> Hello, Dominic, and thank you for joining me, giving me a little bit of your time. Congratulations on The Courier. Thanks, Renato. It's good to be here. Thank you. I, I wanted to start with one of my favorite elements of the film that really stood out to me, and that was the friendship between Gravel and Oleg. I think you accomplished something that these movies usually, the spy thriller genre, usually doesn't do. We have the source, as always, but you there was a really great effort put into their friendship, but also seeing the danger on both their sides. Was that something you really wanted to accomplish or was it just a happy accident? Well, it was there in the script and it was the thing actually that sort of drew me to the project because mm -hmm. I'd ne as you say, I'd never seen that before. I mean, I'm not a sort of spy movie fanatic. I mean, I've enjoyed mm -hmm. spy movies, you know, the, you know, but I wouldn't sort of like, you know, there are people who are so into them and like sort of rush out as soon as they come uh, on, but I, I'm not one of those people. And I was thinking about it when I first read the script. That I, the, one of the reasons why I think that's the case for me is that I find there lack often the sort of human element. There's the intrigue, there's the calculation, but it's, it's that sort of warmth or sense of the sort of cost um, that I found in this film. And absolutely, the friendship is at the heart of it. It's as much a film about friendship as, as it is a film about, uh, you know, espionage and the Cold War and so on. So that was a really key element for me. Yeah, and, and you show throughout the film the, the parallels between them, both family men and growing increasingly paranoid because of, of the pressure around them. I also really loved your approach because the film as a whole is very slow where we're, and we're always with these characters in those key moments where seemingly nothing is happening, but you feel the pressure that's on their shoulders. How was the collaboration with your cinematographer to approach those moments and really let that pressure and suspense sink in? Well, I mean, he's a guy called Sean Bobbitt and we've worked together before. He's a very sort of, he's a really sort of established, experienced and talented guy. He actually used to be a sort of news, uh, news cameraman. Oh. So he's been on like all the war zones of the world. And, and that's given him oh, a very wow. sort of interesting take on things. Um, and we share some pretty similar views, which is based around, I think, the sort of idea that it's maybe quite an old fashioned idea, which is the idea that you sort of make as much of the film as you can in the camera. You, you know, sort of uh, the sort of hard, fast editing that goes a, a lot now in movies. We just didn't yeah. really want to do that. Because I think for me, sometimes it's sort of that way of doing things can just, um, it's a way of deferring the decisions and sort of kicking them down the line. <laughs> yeah. um, and actually often it's where you place the camera, how you move the camera, how many setups you choose to do um that really sort of determines the storytelling and and we didn't want to sort of do tons of coverage and all that stuff we, we will try to be really precise really particular in exactly what we needed and not do any more than that um so yeah that was our sort of approach and we also looked a bit at um hitchcock and the way he uses you know uh uses the camera to sort of get the audience into the head of the person at the center of the story mm -hmm. Uh, and he uses sort of different count, different techniques to do that. So we sort of copied him a bit in some of the yeah. sort of tense, tense moments. It was very sort of copied. Mm -hmm. uh, tribute. Yeah, and Let's call it a tribute. <laughs> tribute. Yeah, I, w I was actually going to ask, at least eventually, if there were any particular works from film and television or, or even directors uh, that inspired you, your approach to this story. And you just answered my question. Mm -hmm. it, it, would you say it's the old adage of... Um, the ticking time bomb. If you know a ticking time bomb is in the room, it's much more suspenseful. Yeah, he's so brilliant on all that stuff. You know, that book with, the, uh, with him and Truffaut is my sort of Bible of storytelling. Oh, yeah. They're two incredible filmmakers talking in such detail about how Hitchcock made his film, his films. And it's a just, you learn, I just learned so much from that book. I mean, I've been working in theater telling stories for decades. And they're mm -hmm. this sort of articulated so many things. You're absolutely right. It's like, you need to let the audience in to the problem before the character necessarily knows about it, because otherwise there is no suspense. But there's a, yeah. you know, the other thing he does a lot is he uses clean point of view. So he, mm. 
if you look, I mean, one sequence, I, I, I watched, um, I, I watched North by Northwest, which is a film I know quite well, which was made at the same time as this film. Uh, I watched that very, very closely. And um, the famous, amazing crop sprayer sequence in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the field, which is just such a brilliant yeah. sequence. And so if you sort of break that sequence down, there's sort of three types of shot. And he does this a lot. He does it in the shower scene in Psycho. There's sort of set up wider shots where you see the situation. There's the tight shot on the protagonist to get their reaction. And then there's a clean point of view. So you're looking from mm. their eyes and the camera is their eyes. And that is the ingredient that I think really helps an audience to sort of be that person when you need them to be. So we used, and there are certain bits like, you know, sort of example would be arriving in the airport. Uh, if I saw the Moscow where we're sort of doing that, yeah. sort of feel the, you know, the tension of it um, and the pressure. Um, yeah, I mean, we looked at other movies at the time as well, you know, to sort of look at how films were made at that point. It's so different to how they're made now. Yeah, for sure. And, and it does feel like a film that, that was even made at that time not just the set there but it was made there so congratulations on that mm -hmm. i want to ask and i, and I want to keep it very vague because this will be going up uh, before the film is out on, on vod this friday but that last uh let's say section of the film um and my favorite scene is that scene between benedict and jesse buckley in when benedict has not been e has not been eating his soup let's say that how did you accomplish that? Was that all, was that Benedict losing the weight? Was it all VFX, a mixture of both? It was about 80% real. Maybe okay. more, like 90. He, he, we stopped shooting three months. Uh, Benedict lost a, a lot of weight under very, both he and Mirab, he plays uh, Pankowski, uh, lost a lot of weight under very strict, you know, guidance. Yeah. <laughs> um, and when, when they turned up, on set after three months, I honestly felt guilty. I felt like, what the hell have I done? I mean, <laughs> I mean, because that, you know, when you, it, when you see someone who's really lost a lot of weight very suddenly, it's not just the sort of physical appearance, it's that whole sort of energy is so different. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like very different. It was quite shocking. But I'm glad we did it because it happened with the real people. It happened with the rebel win. And then we just, there were a couple of moments, like there is a moment in, in the shower, I don't think there were any VFX in the scene you talk about, but there's a moment in a shower where he sort of needed just a little bit of technical help there. So, okay. I mean, you know, I think CG is always better when it's enhancing something, visual effects, when they're enhancing mm -hmm. something that's there. Unless you've got a huge budget to create something out of the blue, generally speaking, in the sort of realm of independent mood. <laughs> Um, you can make a huge difference from sort of a certain amount of enhancement, but it's very hard to get something convincing if you start from scratch sort of thing. So yeah, we went for it. And he was, I just take my hat off to them both because they really committed. It was a big deal doing that. You know? Oh yeah, for, for sure. I, throughout that last portion of the film, I, I was th shaking throughout because the performances, the, the writing, your direction, just, it was, a, and the work that I, that was being done up until then throughout the film was sensational now i'm unfortunately running out of time with you but i want to thank you again for your time any projects you're working on currently we should look out for in the near future well i'm trying to get another film off the ground there's various things i've got a whole load of sister projects that have been put on the back burners for like ages <laughs> um i'm doing this exciting uh, game of thrones theater project but that's oh, wow. very early on it's very early on okay. we've sort of got the first draft of the script and it's a huge thing it's going to take a long time to pull off so that'll probably take a couple of years i think but um, film-wise, I've got two brilliant film projects that I'm trying to get off the ground. And one is, uh, yeah, they're both sort of, uh, the script is sort of there, so it's about casting. I'm working on a, a film of Stephen Sondheim's musical Follies, which I've done on stage, and that's mega, it's huge. It's, it's sort of like, it's a big and beast. Uh, and I hope that we'll sort of get that together. And then I'm, there's a smaller independent movie that I'm producing as well, which is a really beautiful, uh, sort of really smart, uh, sort of romantic comedy about neurotic people. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> it's very different. Very different. But it's a lovely <laughs> script. It's, it's a it's a script that's kind of full of sort of tenderness and awkwardness, and uh, it's lovely. So they're both very different projects. But um, I mean, I've loved, I've loved, I loved my experience of making this film, and um, and felt felt like that I sort of learned a lot doing it. So I'm looking forward to sort of getting on to the next one.
at some point. I'd be soon. For sure. I'm I'm already sold on that on that romantic neurotic comedy. Yeah. That's that's right <laughs> up my alley. <laughs> right, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once more, thank you so much. Congratulations on, on the film. The Courier is now in select theaters and will be available on VOD everywhere this Friday, April 16th. Uh, Dominic Cook, thank you so much once more for your time. Thanks, Renata. Thank you.